so let's talk about UNMI. Uh, I specifically, I want to discuss their bonus. Now, UNMI is a corporation I actually like to play a lot, and I feel it's a little underrated. Um, it's often considered one of the worst corporations. I think in the base game, most people rank it last. I, I don't think it's strong, but I think it's better than last. I, I, I think it can even be average. Uh, but it's really hard to play. Like, it's very easy to make a lot of mistakes with it. And so I am probably going to do a video on tips on how to play it after this one. Right now, I just want to talk about the bonus. So let's talk about UNMI. It, it starts with 40 mega credits, which is low. Uh, no production, an earth tag. And the bonus is actually quite strong, in my opinion. Uh, if you increase your terraform rating this generation, you can pay three to increase it again. Now, three uh, for a terraforming rating is amazing. Three for a victory point alone would be amazing, but three for a terraforming rating is even better. The problem is getting that other terraforming rating that you must get first. Um, and uh, I think this is why people often like to rush with it. I think rushing is probably the best thing, but you can play a, an average length game. I'll go over that in the tips video later and still use it properly. It's just a little harder. And uh, yeah, that bonus, you want to hit that as much as possible. Um, now it's a little easier with prelude because there are some terraforming preludes and I'll, I'll touch on them quickly. But uh, yeah, getting it in those generations, it's really tough and it's kind of hard to... Uh, that, that's when most players make the mistakes on UNMI, uh, giving up too much to, to get that first two terraforming ratings. Um, yeah, and the reason I wanted to do this next, I did Priester, and this is sort of Priester's evil twin, or maybe Priester is the evil twin, actually, uh, in that their abilities are sort of opposite to each other. Uh, one needs to terraform, the other benefits from not terraforming. They both get, well, one gets money directly, the other one gets production, but that production turns into money, uh, and they both get victory points. So I wanted to compare both of those things to Priester after I'm, I'm done with the scenarios. Yeah, and so let's get started. All right, so let's look at what we have here, uh, and let's focus only on the uh, left side for now. So on the left side, what I want to do is just uh, calculate what you get only from the bonus, all right? So basically, uh, this is going to be a 1 or a 0, depending if I terraform it around and have access to the bonus. And I'm assuming that whenever you terraform, you you know leave the 3 money <laughs> necessary to pay for the bonus. Uh, then the 3 money that the bonus costs, your income, and your total MC. So if I just do, you know, every round, get my bonus, 10 rounds, which is a pretty, like an average length game, but you probably want to do less than that uh, you pay three every round for it uh, and you you'll still pay the round 10 even though you won't enjoy it because you want the victory point the three for the victory point is, is, is enough but you won't get the money from that one um, so you could argue this should be 21 but uh, yeah, I counted it because you would pay for it anyway um, now that's gonna get you 18 total so yeah your income just increases one per turn uh, and you're in the negative early, and then after the fifth generation, you start really your income really uh, helps you get into the positive. So it's 18. Now, if we compare that to the Priester uh, video I did, and I will reference it a couple of times today, um, you'll remember it was often between 15 and 30. Um, so 18 is not as great as Priester. Uh, and this is why UNMI is not as good as Priester. I think Priester is amazing. But keep in mind, you're also getting 10 victory points. Um, now, the other thing that's going against UNMI, if you remember the Priester video, uh, they got the bulk of the benefit early, whereas you are, like, suffering early, which I think anyone who's played UNMI will, <laughs> you know, uh, will probably <laughs> confirm that you really suffer early because not only is the bonus cost not paying back yet 
you're also trying to find money for terraforming cards which are not efficient um so yeah this is really a tough part for you and mi after at least the bonus is great like round six to ten the bonus is amazing uh because you're just getting three for a victory point and uh, you know some you'll you'll get like the first two m money back for the first two but yeah the, the money you make is from these ones now here's the thing i always tell people when i play on mi try to skip at most one uh generation the most often the most you know common one is the first one because that's you, maybe you play like well, developmental cards or things like mohal area which will help you get one for free every turn after that so if you make this a zero that's uh you could lose your income by one third now 12 uh uh, by the 12 money by the end of the game with more than half of it coming in the last generation uh, is really not a good cash bonus um, if you think of the cash bonus corps uh, you know director greta core priestar uh, all they all will get more than 12 um, well most likely uh, and those also start with a lot of cash and then there's Thorgate. Thorgate, you'll probably get six, maybe nine, three energy cards with Thorgate. That's that's usually okay. Uh, unless you manage to get a really good Thorgate hand. I mean, I, I have, and you can maybe play six cards and get it to 18. But yeah, even Thorgate um, gets close. So skipping the first one is really bad. Skipping the first two, so sometimes I, I see players that are able to set up like they're terraforming. Uh, with again cards like Mohol or Arctic Algae, and then they say, you know, after that I'll have a lot of steps and I can rush the game. Now, uh, you're getting seven points total, and <laughs> seven cash, sorry, total. Uh, and you're basically getting most of it in the last generation. Like, you're at zero in the eighth generation, like, like just losing lots of money. Um, so, yeah not ideal now i also see the case where there's a prelude so you get your bonus in the first round uh, and then you either take the second one off which is 13 or the second and third off which gives you nine um these are really the three more, most common scenarios i anyone who's keeping terraforming steps beyond the fourth generation uh really i, I you're playing it really wrong and if you skip the first three again look at what happens and this is if the game goes 10 generations which you and my players often want to finish it earlier so um all you're getting basically if you do this is uh seven victory points still good but not good enough uh victory point corporations will often like something like arclight can get you five and they'll do that with four more cash and two more production and they want to like like to play the card. They can play all the victory points cards at the end. Pre-start can easily. I've been over it. It can easily get you six, so plus a bunch of cash. So you know all this work for for just seven victory points is not enough. And what's the other one? Celestic. Now Celestic, uh, I, I I think it's really fun, but the the it's not that strong. Uh, and the, the strength is really in the two cards is drop, but yeah, it, Celestic will never get you uh, even close to seven points. So again, it's nice that it gets you seven points, but keep in mind the cash is a really important thing to take advantage here. So if you manage to do this, you're in a decent range. If you don't, skipping the first generation is okay. You still get 12, which is mediocre, but you're getting nine points. More than that, you're screwed. Okay. Um, so that's it for the bonus, but now let's uh, I, I, I use the right side of the screen to make it a little more realistic. Um, so here, uh, I just added a few things. We have the number of TR steps that you take, uh, and the cost per step on that generation. Uh, now, I'm gonna be making some general assumptions for the cost, like basically the most you ever pay is 14 uh, for one step, which is an asteroid. You have, like, if all you need is to activate the bonus, you have no reason to pay more than that. Now, that's really bad. If you think about it, that's 17 for two steps, which is the same as release of inert gases, which is a, not a great card. Um, but yeah, that's, I, I, you should never, like, you're never gonna pay more than that. 
um, and uh, the least you could pay is maybe bribe committee I think uh, bribe committee is uh, 10 it's a 7 per last 3 for 2 steps so 5 that's the, the cheapest and it's actually a quite a good card for you and MI right, so let's start with something uh, simple uh, like aquifer pumping now this card is deceptively weak <laughs> uh, with you and MI unless you get a big steal uh, Prelude, but uh, so basically the first terraforming rating with it is gonna cost you the 18 plus the 8 plus the 3 that's 29 so let's assume you only kept that or something and <laughs> uh, maybe two other cards uh, but yeah you get one step now every other step is gonna cost you eight right so step eight step eight step eight Oop. And I mean, there's only nine oceans, so. So, what I'm doing here is I'm considering uh, the cost of the terraforming rating, and so, as you see, you never make money because of that first step. It's too expensive, right? Now, of course, uh, this is often going to be just negative here because I'm considering the cost of the terraforming rating uh, so don't compare this to that uh, but I'm just showing you like basically the quality of each strategy with uh, UNMI so don't rush something like aquifer pumping for money now let's do something a little better like moho so let's delete here um, so let's say you do something like uh, Bribe Committee and Moho in the first generation. So uh, that's going to be three, st uh, two steps. Um, and you are paying, well, let's, let's put it together. Bribe Committee is 10, Moho is 23, that's 33. So in that generation, you basically paid um, seven, 16 and a half per step. Okay. However, after that, you get a free one every other generation, right? So here you produce four, you get one. 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 So as you can see, you can go positive here. Um, and any other steps you add here, uh, well, you're just terraforming and, and, and like you might increase your heat a little more. You'll probably get more rating. Uh, or you could do something like Arctic Algae, which would help you. Uh, but this is why Mohol is a lot more efficient. Um, like even if you start paying for, oh yeah, like these these are zeros, right? These are all zeros. But let's try to think of ways to uh, terraform in the generations where you don't get it. You did uh, ripe committee in the first one, okay. and now let's say you do uh, nuke zone in the second one. So that's gonna be two steps. And that costs you uh, 13, which is six and a half per step. Um, and then in the fourth, so you don't have to do anything here. In the fourth, let's just say you pay for a standard ocean. Um, so what's that? 18. So one step costs 18. You're still in the positive here. Uh, yeah, and you can definitely feel like you probably have more heat here, so you might get a free step in one of these two. Or at this point, you can just throw the more expensive asteroids. You'll still be winning. You're, you're getting uh, just two less points than in the previous one, but you're cash positive 10. And that's the difference between a card like Aquifer Pumping and Moho. Uh, now let's talk about Preludes. Uh, so Prelude really make UNMI much more viable. Uh, I'm going to go over my favorite UNMI scenario first. And... Um, after that, I'll discuss like a more reasonable scenario. Okay, so there are eight preludes that terraform. Uh, and what you're looking for in preludes basically is uh, you want at least one prelude that terraforms. Uh, the second thing you want the most is plant and heat production because that's really gonna help you terraform. And then the third thing you want is direct money. Uh, the other thing, the things you really don't want is uh, money production, uh, energy production, it's too slow. Uh, it's just heat, but slower. 
um, anything that takes cash because you really suffer with money in those early rounds as you saw and then the metals production really maybe not helpful you, you really need your cash every round and the metals are more like you know accumulated and then see <laughs> if you can use it uh, on a card and particularly steel will almost never help you terraform so yeah still just stay away from it now my favorite combination oh you also want to be really efficient like you want your pilot to have one terraforming step because that's all you need the first round uh so that it doesn't have bigger drawbacks uh, so something like a uh, huge asteroid, which is probably the best terraforming prelude, it, but it takes five cash, and I mean, yeah, it gives you more income, but you really want a smelting plant is probably better, even though that's not such a good prelude. Um, but it, yeah, it gives you ten cash or ten steel, uh, which can help you play something like Moho, even though again, steel may not be super useful, so that depends. But my favorite combination is Polar Industries and Moho. So what Polar Industries is going to do is that it's going to give you uh, one step in the first generation and three heat. And then with that and Moho you have three heat plus five heat production. So by the second generation start, you can just do your heat step and then you're left with five heat production for the rest of the game. But also you have two rounds to figure out how to get three more or accumulate cash to just terraform all game right so your cost here is zero okay uh because you did it with preludes and your cost here is zero now i want to make it as realistic as possible so in this generation you're gonna have five hit and you can try and wait until the end get that extra hit step pay 14 for it Okay, uh, so then in the next generation, if you play fast, you can get the additional heat step, and let's just play it like that, and that will give you one more heat production, so that you'll have 10 heat, and when you pay one here, you'll get your heat production to 6, uh, and so this one is also free, so this one costs 0, and you have, uh, if you're keeping track, 2 heat left over, and now your production is 6. Which means the next generation, you can also uh, do it for free. And I'm going to say by this generation, you figure out how to get two more heat. So let's say you manage to play uh, Import of Advanced GHG. So that costs 12. So this TR is going to be expensive. But after that, you get all three TRs. And as you can see, you come out really cash positive, and that, that's with preludes, right? Uh, you can even do this and play Moho the first round, and then you're set for a whole game. And so, uh, what I again, uh, uh, these numbers can be really deceptive because all I want to show here is how much money you want to put into the bonus and how much you're getting out of it. So you're obviously going to terraform a little more. And obviously, it's gonna spend more spend more money, but just look at the difference between uh, not investing uh, early in something like aquifer pumping, <laughs> which just just derails your economy, and investing only a couple of times in things like a, a you know a, a standard heat project uh, and one heat production card. That's all you need because you got really lucky with your preludes. Basically, um, you're also on your way to get builder with those preludes, by the way. But uh, now there's a case to be made here. Uh, what if you just skip this round? So let's just go zero. Uh, and obviously it goes zero. Now you're up 40, right? Instead of 37, you're up 40. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't. So <laughs> um, 14 for a terraforming rating well 17 for two because that's what you do with the bonus in the third generation still probably worth it and remember you use that to get the additional hit step so uh instead of that you would have played something else uh, something that gives you three production but yeah even at that point it's still kind of worth it because you're also getting two victory points so you're there's a i mean your cash is gonna be better early so you see uh, you're, you're up money early here uh, if you do the standard heat, you're gonna be negative for a while, a couple of generations after that, 
but you're getting two VPs and you're getting your track bonus. So definitely that's a place where, I, a scenario where I find you, you, you couldn't, can't pay the 14. Now remember, you're not doing anything with money these two rounds, so that's uh, the 40 you start with, plus 20, what's your, in uh, yeah. 20 income from your TR, twice, minus one MC, that you're negative here, because you paid for the bonus. So you have, uh, you know, 80 to play some uh, developmental cards that could help you get this TR. Um, or maybe just like an asteroid that gives you two points, uh, you know, ice asteroid, and it, that gives you two points in, instead of the heat step or, you know, big asteroid. So let's actually do another dream scenario that I like, which is uh, oxygen bumpers. Now, one I really like, and this is the other dream scenario, is, uh, and again, this is a combination of true preludes, so they are pretty rare. So, let's just say, great, aqu great aquifer, uh, and power generation. Um, so, the first two cost zero, and you have three energy production, and because you have two oceans, you get smelting plant. So, again, this is a combination of three cards. This is even a, a rarer scenario, but in the second generation you play Smelting Plant, which costs 15 with the cost of paying for it. Uh, and you immediately get your terraforming step, right? So you get one, and after that everything's free. And you get one step per generation, right, until the oxygen is maxed out. Which could very well be 10 or, you know. But see, in, in this case, if you get something like this, oxygen bumpers are amazing for... UNMI. What you really want is that you want cards that uh, help you bump your TR passively every generation or every other generation. And by passively, I mean at no additional cost per generation. This is the big difference between aquifer pumping and Mohol area. Like the Mohol area, you pay at first, and then every two rounds, you get a free one. Aquifer pumping, you have to pay eight <laughs> every round. So it's really inefficient, right? Um, but let's do, uh, I mean, this is probably, again, the best scenario, uh, but it's so rare because you do need smelting plant in the second generation, so you need great aquifer and power generation. There's a few other scenarios. You know, you could have other cards, other power cards, or maybe someone else places a second ocean and you play something like uh, aquifer turbines, which is the other one I was talking about. But... Uh, yeah, this one just works from the second turn, and uh, you get a lot of cash from it. Of course, this includes the TR cash, but still. Um, let's do one final scenario with like maybe not the best prelude and maybe not the best cards, but uh, you know at least some help. Uh, so I'm gonna choose uh, something like smelting plant. And let's just say you get another build that leads give you some energy that you can use. So, uh, smelting plant. Uh, that's two free steps. And let's say you can play something like maybe not not such an efficient production card like DHG factories. Uh, which means you pay 14, which is 7 per TR step this generation. Now that's gonna do the same as Mohol, uh, and you get the energy from your other prelude. You basically get a power bump every other generation. Uh, so yeah, prelude four. You get one here. You get one here. You get one here. You get one here. But let's say you also have a, a micro bumper in the first generation. Uh, which costs 16, which is eight more per step. So let's say this is 15 per step. So that's a lot of money in the first generation, you know, but you're getting now another step every three. So you tap here, you tap here, you're gonna skip here, so you can tap here and here. So all of these steps are free now, right? And then here you have to figure something else out, but you're gonna have both again here, which means you can tap here for free, which means these two are free, and let's just say nukes on here. Uh, nukes on cost, uh, sorry, no. nukes on gives you two and it costs 13. And uh, yeah, this one, let's just say you even skip it, right? So you end up with 23. 
Well, yeah, no, let's say you get another one for free, because at that point you should have played uh, some production card here that, that helps you. Uh, let's just say you played, you know, uh, carbonate processing back here, and that'll give you enough to, to get a, a terraforming rating here, right? It'll give you three. Uh, and so there, you end up positive 15, which is not bad. Uh, you got a lot of victory points, but again, you and MI can be decent if you play correctly. Uh, so, the energy oxygen bumpers, those are the best things. Mohole area, that's the other one that's really good. Carbon processing, obviously you have the energy production. And the terraforming preludes just give you the head start you need to play it properly. Uh, now I did all of these in 10 generations, some of them are gonna go shorter, so this might be less, but that also means your opponent gets a lot less points and you're getting, you know, one point per generation which is a lot, the shorter the game, the better. Uh, but yeah, that's it for my UNMI video. I hope it wasn't too confusing. Uh, these are two really different things I'm doing here. In one, I'm just getting the, the cash value of the bonus. In the other one, I'm trying to uh, emphasize what cards work better with uh, UNMI. So yeah, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.